hello, this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on the log normal distribution, which I've plotted here, or this is a simulation that is converging to the log normal distribution, and right away we can see that it's not normal, it's not a normal distribution, it's got a positive skew to the right, and also notice zero is right here, so there are no negative values, a log normal distribution is non-zero. This is a simple plot of simulated future stock prices over one period. And so here S sub 1 is a stock price, one period forward, that could be one day, one year, which is equal to today's stock price multiplied by the exponential function of some rate, or that could be E raised to the R power, and so that is a continuous compounding of today's stock price at a rate of R. And what I've done is R, the rate I'm compounding, the rate of return on that stock is normally distributed. If the rate of the return on the stock is normally distributed, then the future price level is log normally distributed. So that's confusing in my experience the first time you hear it because what's going on here is we say a variable is log normally distributed and now in this example I'm talking about a future stock price level so that could be maybe eleven dollars or twelve dollars or something like that not the percentage return the variable the price level is log normally distributed if its log, or natural log, is normally distributed. Here's the variable, here's what it's equal to. This R is normally distributed if we took the, but the, but the whole value is log normally distributed. If we took the natural log of this uh, function here on the right, we would be taking the natural log of an exponential function and these are those are inverse functions and we would be back to the periodic rate of return so the natural log of this function is normally distributed that means the function is log normally distributed and we can see that with the price we got to a price level which has this positive skew and non-zero value this log normal distributed by compounding a periodic rate of return that itself is normally distributed so let me show you how we got there and that hopefully will really crystallize what I've the distinction between normal and log normal I only need three assumptions here I start with a stock price of ten dollars then a mean return, so that's the expected return on the stock of 8%. Now that's the periodic rate of return, and I'm going to do one period, keep it simple. Then I need a volatility, and I have an aggressive value in here just to be dramatic with my chart. I'm saying 50% volatility, and you'll recall that 50% volatility is not about the stock price. Volatility typically refers to the volatility on the periodic rate of return, so we're saying we expect the stock to return 8%, but with volatility on that periodic rate of return of 50%. Then what I've done is simulated 1,000 trials. So I won't show you all those, but that's the power of Excel. I can go all the way down to 1,000 trials. And so let's just take a look at the first trial. The first thing I need to do is generate a random standard normal variable. To do that, I use a common function here. I take the norm s m function of the rand function. So the rand is a uniform distribution. It gives me a random variable between 0 and 1 with equal likelihood of an outcome. Then I take the inverse cumulative normal distribution of that norm s n to produce a random standard normal variable. So that's going to give me the bell curve. That's really, so to speak, going to wrap a bell curve around that random variable. So I'm going to get values here you can see that are both positive and negative and most of them are going to be within three standard deviations. So most of my values here are going to be up to about positive three, could be a little greater, and or down to about negative three but with normal distribution. So so far I haven't introduced the log normal yet. That's the random variable. Then I randomize my return with mean of 8% and volatility 50%. So really 
I'm just applying the standard normal variable to my assumptions here. So all I need to do is say, start with my 8% and add, that's D4, and add my volatility multiplied by my random variable. So all I'm doing there is generating a periodic rate of return that behaves normally, is normally distributed with mean of 8% and volatility of 50%. So here I'm going to get very dispersed values because my volatility is so aggressive. But if I just change that to 5%, for example, you'll see I'm going to get, I'm going to get returns that cluster tightly, low dispersion around my mean of 8% and volatility of 5%. But I'm going to go back because I'm trying to illustrate the log normal to an aggressive volatility. So I get wide dispersion here. Then, now, and so far again, I have not introduced the log normal. I'm still all in normality here. Now I want to use this function here to calculate the future price because, not this function, sorry, this function here, I want to continuously compound today's stock price, that's $10, at the periodic rate of return that I've generated here, which is normally distributed. And so all I do is take the $10, multiply by the exponential function of my periodic rate of return. If I take the stock price and multiply it by the exponential function of that rate of return, I am effectively compounding the stock at that rate over one year. So I get future prices which are driven by my normally distributed random returns where I've assumed they have a mean of 8 but a, but a large volatility of 50%. So I've just applied this formula here, and I'm going to get future prices. Now, so that's the difference. My periodic returns here are normally distributed. And you can, you can just see they go positive or negative, but my future prices, which are the price compounded continuously, those are log normally distributed because if I took the natural log, I get a normally distributed variable. So that means this value is log normally distributed. Then I simply, uh, over, over here, I've just taken these future prices and dropped them into bins so I could chart, that on, chart them on the frequency plot. And I'll hit F9 to recalculate just to show you. That's each of these, each time I hit this, I'm rerunning the 1,000 trials and collecting the frequencies. So each time I'm getting something that looks fairly log normal because I've run a large number of trials. And again, I would say all based on the periodic rate of return, which is normally distributed, meaning my future stock price is log normally distributed. This is log normal because the log of it, or natural log of it, is normal. And visually, I can see I have a log normal distribution because positive skew to the right. If you think about it, I can, I can get a, well, I can get an infinitely high stock price, but non-zero at the left because although my rate of return can be negative, my stock price can never go below zero. So that's my log normal distribution. This is David Harper. Thank you for your time. See you next time.